Hello, Tyler Pike. How are you doing? Doing excellent. How are you today? I'm excited. I'm super excited to chat with you. Um, for anyone who is listening, Tyler Pigott is loan for a CEO. Um, he's also a really fast runner, really fun person. But most of all, uh, he leads a lot of our vision and mission, um, certainly not alone, but spears that uh, a lot for our company. And so today we are talking about brand positioning, but more importantly, how brand positioning really takes a cue from a company's purpose and direction and organizational um, kind of vision, because without it, there would probably be a lot of confusion. So thank you for taking a couple minutes out of your day, Tyler. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Just context when you introduced me as a fast runner. I'm, I don't like, I do run a little bit. I'm not usually running from things or being chased by anything just, just to like fast. kind of clarify if anybody's like, yeah. why is he running fast? That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's for exercise purposes. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly because I run with Tyler and he makes me look very slow. So that's, that's <laughs> <what I'm wrong. laughs> um, so yeah, as far as topic goes, um, yeah. we work on, we're a branding and marketing agency. And so for clients and ourselves, we work on brand positioning quite a bit. Um, and my overly fancy title here is brand strategist. And what that means is I have a big role in that, luckily, and I, I love that. Um, and a lot of times I can, you know, do a lot of research and figure out what other companies are doing and kind of bring things to the table. That's like, Hey, maybe we should, you know, position us like this or for our clients say, you know, maybe you should think about this direction, but those positioning, um, elements, the things that you talk about in your brand strategy externally, uh, they come from internal direction of the company, vision, purpose, mission, things like that. Okay. So for you, we can, we can talk about our company and kind of how you lead the mission and vision and, and purpose uh for us how do you feel like that impacts positioning in your experience like why is that important why can't we just um look at you know opportunities that are out there and just go after all of them well, that's a great question um i mean probably the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about kind of like that i guess i'm going to call them like buckets like you know from our from a vision standpoint mission standpoint kind of where you're going directionally like first thing that comes to mind is, is it helps you know what to say no to. Um, there's a million opportunities every day. I mean, and as you continue to pick up speed, if you will, as an organization or grow your business, there's actually just more opportunities, more, you know, recognition in different places or people call you and ask for things or, you know, you can pursue really anything you want, like the sky's the limit. And so it really helps you kind of like hone in like, hey, this is what we're doing. And then it helps you kind of like I oftentimes call it a filter. So like, how are you making decisions and using your kind of that purpose, that vision, mission of your organization and where you want to go as your filter? So you like make decisions through that, you, you know, as far as like organizational structure, people you hire, team members, like you make some of those decisions based on that, um, you know, as far as like clients you want to pursue or services you want to pursue or products you want to build or acquisitions you want to make or whatever. You know, it has to go through some sort of a, of a filter. Otherwise, you know, before Frank and I got on the call, we were laughing, you know, kind of comparing a couple of notes and we were laughing because if you don't have one, like all of a sudden we're a, a branding, marketing and strategy company. And all of a sudden we open a retail store in a mall or something <laughs> because, oh, they, they, I saw one that was available and that looked really fun. And most of the time in a startup world, you know, you've got a, a founder or a CEO that's an entrepreneur. And so entrepreneurs are very optimistic. Usually um, they're generally like go-getters, pretty ambitious. Like I, for me, myself, I usually have a business idea or a product idea every day, if not five. And so if you let me just kind of like go crazy, probably we'll just have all these different offshoots, which kind of means you'd like do a lot of things, but nothing really very well. And so you kind of have to like, you know, hyper-focus or narrow down like your direction and having a super clear kind of that mission, purpose, um, vision does help in crafting positioning. So I don't know if that was a good summary or a good answer, yeah. but that's kind of the thought process that I usually have. So. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the way I, I kind of like read that back to summarize would be um, just, just having like guidelines or parameters to stay within because there really could be um, a wide variety of things that you can go after shining objects, whatever it is. And so just a way to say no and what to say yes to and, and make decisions. Um, yeah. And I would say from my perspective, like looking at the opposite side of that, um, there's a reason we work somewhat closely together because when I'm working on things for our company, um, I need a little bit, I, I take cues from our purpose and our vision. Like I'm not the one setting that, I'm the one trying to help carry that out. 
Um, so whenever it's like, hey, how should we position ourselves? Well, that's usually going a little bit upstream to figure out, well, what do we need to get to? Like, where, where do we want to be? What do we want to accomplish? And then we have a bit more, there's still a multitude of options. You can still take probably five different routes there, but now it's just five and you're deciding between them versus like, well, there's, there's really just a blank canvas and we can go anywhere with this. Yeah. Um, so I know that's helpful as, as kind of the person that um, helps with the positioning aspect of that. Good. What would you say, so when it comes to brand, we talk about like vision and purpose and mission and positioning and identity and all these different things, looking at positioning and then looking at like purpose, what would you say that some of the key differences are between those two things? And, and why would, I would add, why is that important to, to even understand? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll kind of give an example of our journey as a company. Obviously, you know, for people listening or people watching or whatever, like we started small, you know, and started as just me and added contractors and started adding employees and started acquiring companies and continue to move forward. And so when you're small, you kind of have this like grand vision, but like, you know, we, I couldn't position us as a 50 person company doing 10 million a year on day one, but yet I had that vision. And so like the, I, like, I almost kind of say like your vision, at least for us has kind of stayed very similar. It's got three different aspects to it you know, build an excellent boutique type type agency where you've got a smaller volume of clients, but you're deep kind of integrated into their marketing and branding strategy kind of campaigns. And then secondary, secondarily, we're building some passive revenue streams. And third, we're able to kind of start investing in companies um, and, and helping them grow through some of the skill sets that we have. And so those are, have been a pretty stable, I mean, Frank's probably heard me say that, I don't know, a hundred times or more, you know, like those have been a pretty stable brand vision from years ago. Yeah. But as like almost, I'd almost say almost every 18 months to two years, we're kind of like recrafting our positioning because yeah. we're moving like either maybe say upscale from a smaller size client to a larger size client, or, you know, maybe we're adding in a different service option or department or, or offering, or, um, or maybe we're moving like from, you know, Hey, we used to service any client that comes to us with a checkbook, you know, kind of thing yeah. to, Hey, we actually only focus on these three industries. Um, so like that, I would say the positioning can get kind of revamped or like refreshed on a regular basis. And that's diff regular basis is a different frequency for any company or cadence for any company. Um, but yet your brand vision usually stays the same. It's, it's a unique scenario for a company to like kind of come in and go, Oh, we're going to take a left-hand turn here from a vision standpoint. It happens for sure, but it is unique for, for lots of businesses. So I don't know if that makes sense, but kind of thinking of your vision is like a kind of stable backbone throughout, whereas in your positioning can be kind of, like I say, refreshed on a regular basis, depending on, yeah. you know, language or word choice or markets you're going after or verticals you're trying to approach kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, that's the time element of it. And and that also doesn't mean like, for most companies, the position will change a little bit over time. It also doesn't mean it has to, maybe it's just slightly tweaked, um, depending on how accurate it was to start. Um, but then more likely, it's like you just said, like earlier on, you're probably going to hold that pretty loosely. Like, we actually don't do super well with positioning companies that haven't started yet. Uh, cause you really like, it's still a position, but you actually hold something really loose. It's like, well, we're, we do a little of this and a little of this because yep. you don't want to, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself too early on. But then the more you learn about who you are and who's the best fit for your business and things like that, you might change to, we do this specific thing for this specific group of people. Cause you have more data on like, Hey, this is probably what's best for our company. Right. Uh, whereas like you said, yes, I have heard you say that a hundred times, <laughs> hundred one, um, yeah. But I, but I love it. And I think a lot of people on our team do too, because we can also like get on board with that and you don't have to, you know, constantly push that forward because you have people that understand where we want to go mm -hmm. uh, and trying to help figure out, well, how do we get there within that, that parameter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, last question I would ask is what factors of, of vision and mission and purpose do you feel like have been most valuable in growing our brand and kind of like making decisions for our brand growth over time? Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I would say like, this one's gonna be kind of weird probably for some people, but I'd say like simplicity, um, you know, and I think of like, we just kind of riffed on the three different kind of pillars or factors of our vision. Could I talk for an hour on each of those? Probably, you know, um, and there's tons more detail and oftentimes it sparks questions when you bring it up. 
But at the same standpoint, probably not everybody from people that are like leading the company and supervisors or directors all the way down to, you know, maybe a new hire, they're not all thinking about those at all times. And so just the idea of keeping it simple enough to where people can kind of grab onto it and remember it, or, you know, they're not, it's not like, you know, printed on their bed sheets, but it's all, but it's, you know, something that's referenceable, you know, it's something that they can kind of come up with. If so, if you asked them, they'd be able to stumble through it. And so I think just the ability for you or, or for leaders and people that are kind of creating that vision to really almost wrestle with it long enough to where it's like simplified. And I, I almost kind of call it like simplicity with power because there is power for everybody in the organization to have be on the same page. And it's really hard if that page is a novel, um, you know, but if it's an actual page with a couple of bullet points, you know, that's usually easier to remember or digest or somehow like, you know, be able to recall for most people. And so I would say like the simplicity piece is big. I think, you know, there's a lot of importance, like going from simplicity into kind of what I talked about as far as like everybody on the same page, there's a lot of power in that as well. Like, you know, when you're all kind of rowing in the same direction at an organization and all chasing after the same thing and have kind of priority, uh, I'm not saying priorities, I'm saying priority, one, uh, it's generally really um, impactful very quickly yeah. versus if you kind of have, yeah, we all basically do this. Well, that's going to be, it could be kind of rough because everybody's going to have their own like little kind of degree or two difference or five degree difference on whatever that is. And so like having that simplicity, getting everyone internally to kind of, you know, be in the same page. Usually what happens then if that's the case is, you know, we talk a lot, a lot about like brand and brand positioning is more like that perception of what, you know, customers or outside people, if you will, not inside your organization, perceive your company to be um, and your brand to be perceived that way. And so it kind of oozes, if you will, like, you know, if everybody on your whole company is on the same page and running in the same direction, generally, like people pick up on that externally as well. And it helps you build a stronger brand that way. And so I think just kind of having that, having that like decision filter kind of process to where you've kind of, and I mentioned that earlier, but just so that you can make decisions as an organization and what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Um, that's usually helpful because there's a million distractions. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that I'm always fighting against is what's a distraction versus something you spend time on. That can be meetings you take or, you know, people that reach out to you. There's always someone that wants to disrupt your day, essentially, not necessarily negatively, but they're trying to get you to pay attention to them. Yeah. And so how do you like sort through those? And usually it's really easy for me because I'm like, oh, that's not what I'm focused on this quarter or this month or this year. Um, and I try really hard to not just chase squirrels that run by or shiny things that, you know, that I might notice out of the corner of my eye, you know, yeah. so that's, that's usually helpful if you've got like a pretty clear, like decision-making type filter. And that oftentimes comes through that kind of vision and, and um, purpose and, you know, kind of more of that, like, why do you exist yeah. type, type exercise. So I don't know if that yeah. makes sense, a little bit rambly, but. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, yeah, just understanding like the pillars and values and um, yeah. making it making it easy to digest. Um, I can verify that, that that certainly has had an impact on our teams and um, yeah. allows us to do that really well. And I think like, again, kind of like from the other perspective, if anyone's working on the positioning portion of it, um, taking those things and reflecting, like you just said, externally is really, you kind of do have to start from the, the internal um, the core of your company or what you guys want to achieve, even at, I would imagine pretty big companies, it may be different because, um, you know, we, I have, I can just sit here and talk to you or if I really, really need to, um, hopefully not too much, but I can reach out and kind of let you know, oh, yeah. also companies where the founder is no longer alive or not around or the board of directors. And, um, yeah. I would imagine that though, at some point there were infused about the kind of design values and design direction, but then there's probably also organic direction. Like, we our team's a lot bigger than it used to be. And I'm sure that yes, you know, a lot of a lot of our culture and organization where we want to go um, certainly reflects yourself and our partners kind of like personal yeah. visions for what they want to achieve. But there's also been elements where it's been an aggregate of, of the people that we have and kind of how that has helped form it. Um, yeah. And then we just our positioning is well, how do we reflect ourselves outwardly to try and accomplish those things. What types of projects do we want to work on as a service-based business? Yeah. What do we want to achieve? What are our revenue goals? And then we kind of create positioning to help us move closer and closer to that. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I think that's great. Yep. Um, 
for anyone watching, I will be posting a, uh, we, we came up with a brand positioning worksheet. Uh, it is not the most comprehensive uh, thing you will ever go through, but it's a starting point just to kind of work through some of these types of things. What questions to ask, um, how to approach it in sequence so you have a little bit of an approach to uh, developing maybe a, a position or understanding what that might or should be. Uh, so feel free to check that out. Any final thoughts, Tyler? Uh, spend time on it spend time on this i'd call this a strategic foundational element it's kind of the concept i always use is like you know hey i'm ready to build a house so i just go start buying doors no you kind of figure out what kind of house you want you know where you're going to build it likely you're going to start with pouring a foundation or having some sort of base layer versus just deciding you're going to put siding on something that doesn't exist and so lots of people just want to jump into i just need a website and you're like well what do you guys do or what do you want to do? Or like, you know, how do we aspirationally help you get there? And, you know, there's a lot of those kind of those factors that are required. And so I'd encourage people just to, to spend time on it. This worksheet gets you in the right direction, um, you know, and then helps you kind of at least start, start uh, understanding what the, some of the questions you should uncover and stuff. But I'd highly recommend that people spend the time on it. So. Cool. Well, great insight. Thank you again. And maybe we'll talk soon. <laughs> Sounds good. See ya. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Bye.